Hey guys, welcome to Lee's Open Mic, our very first edition where we're going to talk to a lot of funny people, famous people, people we think you'd be interested in getting to know a little bit better. And our very first guest for the show, Pablo Francisco, who's a, a very funny comic who has the great ability to jump in and out of personas and folks and matter of fact brings a lot of energy to the stage each and every time he performs. Let me give you just a little sample of what Pablo can do. Well, that guy can take any topic, regardless what it is, and make it cool. Put the lights out now. Put the spotlight on me. <laughs> In the city, you must fight to survive. He sold tortillas on the corner. And the mob wanted him. I don't know who this guy is, but I want him and his tortillas. Dead! He had one chance, and his chance was to fight back Arnold Schwarzenegger. Please listen to me. These are my tortillas, and I'm not going to get them out here. Listen to me. Double the action. Triple the excitement. Get down! More of the excitement. Get down again! They didn't know who he was. Mijito, where those men who came here, what did they want? Listen to me. You have to keep your head down. They are trying to take my tortillas. Solution. Arnold Schwarzenegger this summer is no! Little Tortilla Boy. Hey, thank you, Austin, man. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. The, the tortillas. You owned that. I owned it, man. You tortillas. You know. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger's getting old, so it's not a, I'll be back. It's like I'll my back. That's what it is nowadays, you know? Yeah. But uh, hey, we own, you owned it, but now that was years ago. But mm -hmm. uh, how are you? Well, I'm good. First of all, thank you for, oh, for no being problem. a guest on, on the big show. Here. On the we, big show, man. We, we Lee's, appreciate it. Right, right on. on. Yeah. Right on. Ribs. Lee's. Let's right talk on. a little bit about that. Uh, some of the impressions that you do. So as a young person, uh, you had the ability to um, to do the impression. How would that come about, that talent, that skill set? That, uh, it was basically uh, watching other people do it. You know, you watch like Rich Little on television. You know, right. So there. there's an unlocking mechanism somebody else came up with for you. Right. You know, it was like, well, well, you know, like, um, like one time uh, my brother borrowed money from me, right? And in order for me to get my money back, and you, you say it in your own voice, can I get my money back? And they're like, man, you know, they get all pissed off. So it's one time I just went high on when one of my voices. I just went, it was Chris Rock. <laughs> give me my money. What the hell's wrong with you? Gambling? I don't get it. Give me my money. And after that, you start thinking, all right, hit that inflection. And that, that could go into, you know, you can take it low to that, you know, to that kind of, are you in good hands to Danny Glover with all state stand? So it's like, <laughs> you, uh, yeah, how are you doing? And Aaron Neville, hip, 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 hip. So uh, two of boss gags kind of thing. So Yeah. But it, so there's a lot of accidental discovery right, as accident. to within your own range. Right. But, but then is there ever a, a, a purposeful attempt to mimic just because you go, there's something there when I'm watching this actor, this famous person. Yeah. I got to be able to figure this out. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, you gotta, it's like you want to make sure that you go, you hit it right on the head, you know, like Casey Kasem. He's like, I'm Casey Kasem. You can't go, I'm Casey Kasem. You got to you gotta get make it rich. And it's, uh, the goal is to make it sound exactly like it, you know. And right. I can't do Christopher Walken. There are a lot of people who right. do Christopher Walken. But I can't do it, but they can do a Dennis Hopper talking to Christopher <laughs> Walken. Come on, man. I got a nose hair or something in here. Come on, man. <laughs> and then you breathe in, you know, do the Mark Wahlberg. Hey, man. You doing good? You doing good? He has a mustache. You doing, you doing good? So it's like, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there, a lot of good, you know, impersonators that, uh, you know, try to get your best one in. Yeah, so um, and once you get the impression now, and it, it, the difficulty for a lot of people who can have your skill set is to be funny with it. Yeah, you got to. It's just one thing that, you know, do impressions. Right. There's got to be. You, you want to make it organic somehow, I assume, too, yeah. right? The joke? You got to make it, you, can, you can't just do a Chris Rock joke, you know. I mean, if you do Chris Rock, you have to make up your own Chris Rock jokes, you know. If you do Rodney Dangerous, <laughs> hey, all right, you got to do your own. 
like Johnny Carson. I mean, everyone was doing Johnny Carson, but you got to do them on cocaine. I am, I am so high right now. Uh, wow, a uh, little paranoid. Uh, is that a new drummer? All right, kind of, kind of do it that kind of way. But uh, or like you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's always doing action movies. So have him narrate a National Geographic movie, you know, the bumblebee is coming, you know, he's a little tender little guy, you know, watch out, he's in the cobwebs or, you know, that kind of stuff. You, uh, growing up, with any kind of influence that, because you mentioned Johnny, yeah. for a lot of comics, I mean, that's the guy, but was there anybody in particular for you? Benny Hill, Benny Hill, love oh, Benny, Benny Hill. Hill. Benny Hill's just, you know, just zany and just, uh, you know, just silent films kind right. of, sort of, but uh, very, uh, English, you know, and you, you couldn't understand right. him, but he he can always go into a, a Randy Travis kind of country guy to hello and to Lou and porridge and quackety yeah. cooks. So I would say Benny Hill would probably be the, the biggest influence. There's Steve a Martin. lot of layers with Benny Hill too. Oh though. yeah, people don't get and and the fact that he, the doing what he's doing in the culture as to which he lived right was rebellious in a lot of ways. Yeah, I mean there was a little bit of sex, but uh, you know some nudity, but uh, it was on PBS, but. Uh, it was from you know from London, but uh, when you look at it, everyone related to it. You know, even the adults. You know, right. you know, you sit in the same room and laugh your ass off or butt off. Sorry. Right. But it, the thing with Benny Hill to me, I find is that he strikes a chord. Maybe it's just with guys. I don't know. Yeah, Almost yeah. like the Three Stooges. But there's that innate reckoning that oh yeah, I think that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I think this way. Yeah, yeah. I don't want uh, anybody to know I think this way. Yeah. But this is the way I. Yeah, think he unlocks it. that little kind of. Yeah. It's like a, it's a good pervert. It's like a good flirt. That's what it is. <laughs> he does. You know. He's in the music. You know. <laughs> you can't make love that. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> so it was like uh, music and uh, silent films together, but uh, it's universal. Everyone like those that goofy stuff. You mentioned Steve Martin too. Steve Martin, wild and crazy guy. Yeah, he was. Uh, He's a genius, you know, just an actor and stand-up comic. You know, when you see a guy playing guitar and juggling and has a, you know, arrow through his head, you automatically, you know, get attracted to that, too. Your first time on stage? When was that? First time on stage was at the Black Angus Bar in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Uh, took my brother's fake ID, went up there and uh, entered it and uh, took first. Really? Yeah, I took first. And uh, what was I doing? What material was I doing? So you become uh, really... Uh, a it, piece of work. At yeah, that kind point. of. You know, you want you win your first time on stage. Yeah, so now you think you're Richard Pryor. No, so. no. Actually, I was scared, man. I was like, well, man, I won. Okay, well, you know, three other people, <laughs> but uh, oh, okay, yeah. you know, there were three other people there. So I was like, all right, and those were reading cue cards. So I just snuck in there, kind of did it. But uh, other than that, it, it was a hobby that kind of like came like became a career, I guess. But, right. So it's like anybody out there get on the YouTube, and it's never too late to be a karaoke star like me. So uh, you. It, it came to a point where was it the passion or was it the money got a little better and you thought, well, uh, wait a minute, I'm having fun doing this. So let me oh yeah, it was uh, get away from the real world. It was uh, it was these club owners just opening up restaurants and then putting stages in them. And, right. and so then, when uh, was this? What eighties, eighty five, eighty three? Oh, it was, was really boom, big. Boom, I guess. Oh, it was still booming, going, yeah. Booming big, and Tim Allen was uh, starting his own show. And comedians were getting a lot of getting their own TV shows and stuff. Right. And, uh, if you look at uh, some of the TV shows nowadays, it's all comedians mm -hmm. are just uh, right. either co-writing them. You know, I wrote for NFL Films for three years, uh, wrote a few commercials. So it's just uh, just getting on stage and being your own director. Now, what what were you writing for NFL Films? Was it like the bloopers? Yeah, you know, I was I was writing there. It was for the Skinny Guy projects there, uh, for Steve Sable. He uh, they selected me to write there for like three years, and it was fun just hanging out, you know, at the in Philadelphia and uh, meeting uh, Steve Sable and. Uh, all these other guys, uh, Peyton and Manny, and, uh, and uh, who's the other guy from the Miami, the coach of the Miami? Uh, it was Jimmy Johnson or Dan, Don Shula? John Shula, yeah, John Shula. So it was, like, it was really cool working for those guys because I wasn't really a football fan, but yeah. my friend was directing there, so we just kind of teamed up and put some things. That's together. been a cool gig. Oh, it was, it was an yeah. excellent gig, yeah. And uh, not that you have these anymore, but those moments on stage where things aren't working as well. Right. Any particular story you have with that of uh, a uh, night that I had, uh, you had usually to I deal with notes. some things? I got my notes on my hand right here. Uh, usually, uh, <laughs> not too. Uh, I would say like after a show, um, Aaron Neville came up to me because I was making fun of Aaron Neville, going, "Hey, no, really? So you do that impression? Can we hear something?" Yeah, Aaron, Aaron Neville, like uh, it sounds like you're trying to find a radio station. Hip hop, hip hop, hip hop, that kind of thing, right? Right. And he got a tattoo on his face. And he was doing a milk commercial. Milk gives you strong bones. And I go, so when you go to prison, you can defend yourself. And he just comes <laughs> off, he comes off the, 
off the the bus, and I was like, I'm out. Boom. So uh, yeah, tattoo in the face. I don't. Is that right? He was looking for you. Well, well yeah, you heard me. I was by his bus singing. Mm, you go to prison, <laughs> you get my. So then, but this wasn't a show, show. You no, weren't no, on no, stage. No, on show. Oh, on uh. stage, uh, nothing. That yeah, was so far so good. Yeah. I'm no, yeah. no craziness. That no know. crazy. Maybe a yeah. drunk who sounds like Bill Cosby. But never mind. He's like, all right. <laughs> Pablo Francisco was kind enough to come by and uh, hang with us on uh, Lee's open mic. Actually, look up at the sign to hey. remember what the show's name was. Yeah, Lee, you're, you're right. Yeah. Come on, Lee. Hey, buddy, thanks for doing hey, this man, with hey, me. Thank I you. appreciate it. Take care, man. All right, guys, that'll do it for this edition of Lee's open mic. See you later. Ouch. Boink.